Hey guys, this is Trina, and today I will be doing my July and August reading wrap-up. Now the reason I didn't do separate reading wrap-ups for these months is because I've had exams, I went on a little vacation, and I moved to my grad school apartment, hence why the background is different. Um, so I decided to combine these two reading wrap-ups just because I've been so busy, um, but I'm back at it now and I hope you enjoy this video. So the majority of these books I don't actually have the physical copies of because they're back at my house house, um, so I'll just insert a picture of those ones instead. So to start off July, the first book I read was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book follows the Trojan myth of Achilles and Petroclus and their love story throughout the Trojan War. This book was so well written. I just thought it was a beautiful love story and it destroyed me in so many ways. Like, you know, most people know the basic plot of Achilles, but even knowing so, you're still destroyed at the end, and it's just so beautifully written. Um, I will say that if you're not like super into Greek mythology, it might not be the book for you, but I love that kind of stuff, so I really, really enjoyed it. The next book I read in July was Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. This book follows our main character, Samantha, as she is navigating her life in high school. She wakes up one day thinking that it's a normal day as planned, but at the end of the night she actually dies and ends up waking up, reliving that last day over and over and over again. And it's about her trying to come to terms with why this is happening to her, um, and it's really about a redemption story and how this main character is able to find her kindness through this tragic event that's happened. This book was quite emotional and does deal with some pretty dark topics, so it's definitely something that I will put a warning on if you're planning on reading um, it, but it was beautifully written and I thought it had a really powerful message. I watched the movie in July as well and I thought it was really well done. Um, but if you're one of those people that likes hard-hitting contemporaries, I would definitely recommend it. The next book I read in July was Dear Martin by Nick Stone. This book follows our main character, Justice. He's an incredible student who has great prospects for college, when one day he is stopped by a police officer. He is in the midst of helping his drunk ex-girlfriend and the police officer assumes that he is out to hurt her and so he gets arrested for this event. This book was very timely for sure um, and it was very powerful. I think it dealt with a lot of issues that America is currently facing and it really showed the difficulties that young black men have to face with the justice system in the states and in other parts of the world of course but this book does take place in the states um, i thought it was incredibly written it's been described as the little brother to the hate you give which i totally see um, and i just think it was a really powerful book that a lot of people should read it's very short too like it's only about like just over 200 pages so it won't take that long to read but it's definitely powerful and an important read the last book I read in July was To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. So this was a series that I never actually planned on reading just because, you know, I don't really read a lot of romance that's just romance. Like, I, I tend to, like, I like books that have romance in it, but I don't read a lot of romance where that's the center of the plot, um, at least not often. But I saw the trailer for the movie on Netflix and I thought it looked so cute and I loved that it had an Asian American main character because you don't see a lot of that in books. Um, and then I just like sped through this book. I thought it was so adorable and precious and like, uh, it was just, it was just that fun, cute summary read that I think everyone kind of craves at this time of year. Um, but I really, really loved it, and um, I was definitely excited to pick up the rest of the series after I finished that one. Um, so this book follows our main character, Lara Jean. 
and she has always been someone who has struggled with expressing her feelings. Um, every boy she's ever had a crush on, she has written a love letter to, but she's always just kept them in her room as something private. But one day, all those letters get mailed out to all the boys she's ever had a crush on, and mischief and mayhem ensue, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, one of the boys she has a crush on and her end up faking a relationship for the sake of him making his ex-girlfriend jealous. She agrees to it is because one of the letters was written to her sixers as boyfriend and she just does not want to dig up that can of worms. Um, but through this fake relationship they start to have feelings for each other and it's just super cute and adorable and I loved it. I, it's just, it's precious. So then we reached August and in August the first book I read was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I know like really positive happy title. Um, this book takes place in modern world but it has a little twist on it. Um, basically it's modern world except scientists have found a way to notify everybody the day they're gonna die. So you get a call close to midnight and are told that you're gonna die sometime in the next 24 hours. And there's an app called the Last Friend app where people who are gonna die can contact other people who are gonna die and spend their last day with that person. So, I mean, Adam Silver is known for writing like such hard-hitting books and like, you know, it says in the title what's gonna happen, but like, of course, it still destroyed me, like, ugh, but Mateo and Rufus are like my new like faves, I love them, and yeah, it's just Adam Silvera, I can never have anything negative to say about his books because they're all incredible. The next book I read in August was The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bakken. So the movie for this just came out this month, which I haven't gotten a chance to see because I wanted to see it after I moved, but then it wasn't playing in any theaters near me, so that sucked, but I do plan on seeing the movie at some point. Um, but this is the first book in a dystopian trilogy which follows these kids who have powers and the government are basically trying to rehabilitate all of them so that they can't use them. However, rehabilitation isn't really possible, so what ends up happening is all these kids go to these very abusive camps, and it's about our main character, Ruby, who has escaped from this camp and joins another group of kids that are trying to live on their own despite what the government thinks of them. I love this book, like, it was such a great, like, it, it's actually really hard-hitting at points, like, um, I think lots of the issues that are present in it are definitely very present in our everyday. It was very intense, it was very fast-paced, it was just, it was everything that I want to see in dystopian literature, and I think it was just fantastic. Um, I'm really excited to see the movie and I'm really excited to continue on with this series. The last book I read in August was P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is the second book in the To All the Boys I Love Before trilogy. I won't say much of what it's about because it will definitely contain spoilers from the first book, but if you do like the first book, I would recommend continuing with the series because I really also enjoyed the second book. So that's all for my July and August reading wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to this channel. I would also love to hear what you've been reading this month, so let me know if you read anything that you really enjoyed or didn't enjoy. Whatever it may be, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!